So good morning, everyone, and uh, I'm pleased to welcome you here for the uh, Forescout for the first uh, tech field day for us. Uh, this is a good event, and I'm excited to use this opportunity to introduce uh, to our new product that's going to, uh, we believe, it really develops and builds our mission to secure devices and the, the, that are showing up in every one of, of uh, companies, organizations, and networks. So we'll, we have a big agenda in front of you. Uh, what I, my goal today is kind of go through a little bit, give you context around Forescout, our mission, our strategy. And then really have my colleague, uh, Tom Dolan, introduce you to iSegment. This is a, we believe, a, a new introduction, a very new product, an exciting new product into, into the market. Uh, he will tell you about uh, the product, but I'll, I'll give you a sense of where that fits in our strategy and how the investments we've been making over the last 10 years really create a foundation for, for the solution we're bringing to market. Let me start by introducing the trends that we're seeing in the market that are really driving uh, th this need. First, I think we've everybody has heard about this repeatedly, it's the explosion of devices. And everybody, when hears this word, think, of, think the, about the Internet of Things. And that's a big driver of, of this growth, but that's not the only growth of devices. Reality is, in the data center, in the cloud, you're having an explosion of workloads. And in, in critical infrastructure, you're seeing a whole set of devices that have either historically been connected or are being connected to networks. You would call the operational technology or industrial <coughs> IoT devices. So those are an area. And so Gartner is predicting that over the next five years, the number of, of devices a CIO will be responsible for will actually go triplicate. Um, the second trend is that it's not just the explosion of the devices, it's that these devices are showing up in different places and being fully interconnected. IoT devices are being deployed in the campus, but they need to communicate to a data center, they need to communicate to a cloud in order to get its intelligence. Uh, and devices that are um, workloads being deployed on the cloud need to use services that are in your data center and they're being accessed by individuals in your campus. And even the devices on the critical infrastructure that we've always thought about being air-gapped and there's no connectivity, we've seen through initiatives like industrial, Industry 4.0 um, that they're trying to connect to the cloud. That's the only way you're going to get predictive maintenance and all the promises of the future into that space and op operational value is by connecting it to your data centers and to the cloud. So this is a need um, that we're seeing, and we're seeing this by uh, uh, creating the need for CIOs and CISOs to become responsible for all of these environments instead of just parts of their networks. And finally is the need for automation. This, uh, this word three, four years ago was almost like a, a bad word. People would say from a security perspective, they would say automation is bad. Because if I automate, somebody's gonna take advantage of that automation in, term, in terms of an attack. Today, that's no longer a question. The reality is the explosion of devices, the, the speed of threats, just the volume of activity exists on the, uh, in the network and the number of tools, automation is now a requirement. And it needs to be done at line speed. It needs to be orchestrated through a strong policy set of engines that really allow you to do what you need to do based on what's going on in your environment. Now, these are not new problems. There's been Companies have been trying to solve these problems for some time. Now, what it requires it, today, it's a different approach. So in the past, as people tried to, to secure the devices that exist in their networks, they tried to deploy agents in each of these. Security industry has been built around the, the concept of an agent, a piece of software that you put on the device to try to control it. That doesn't scale in the world of IoT. <laughs> that doesn't even scale in the world of a cloud where uh, agents are actually seen as could potentially affect the performance of an application. So you need to be able to move to an agentless solution in order to solve this, this problem. The second one is a lot of these have been solved through individual solutions and technology stacks. Even companies and large companies that address both the campus, the data center, and the cloud, they built separate stacks and solutions for each of those environments. That doesn't scale. In an environment where everything is interconnected, you need to be able to not have visibility across all those environments, but also be able to orchestrate policy across all these environments. And finally, 
most solutions end up just giving you alerts, and there's a alert fatigue. And there's a socks, they're basically running out of people that cannot deal with all the alerts. And you end up basically having to triage alerts and be able to uh, not actually spend the time on the alerts that you want. Automation becomes critical. I think the world has moved from swivel chair between different consoles to automation tools. And we see that as a critical aspect of what we believe uh, the security industry needs and very key to not just uh, alerts in general, but how do you take actions in terms of what to do when you learn <coughs> something about the devices and the risk of those devices in your network. So who's Forescout? Forescout is the leader in device visibility and control. You'll probably not find that category on the Gartner report yet, um, but we believe that this is uh, the promise we're giving is that companies need to understand what they have in their networks. All types of devices, virtual, physical, any type of network, and be able to understand the risk and the security posture that create to, your, to that network, and then <coughs> determine what actions and what access that device has in your network. Now, historically, when you get to the access, you would typically think about it in terms of network access control, NAC, a very well understood industry. What we're introducing today is expanding the ability of those controls to a more proactive set of controls that we call segmentation, network segmentation. I will try not to steal more of the thunder from, from Tom, but that's what we, it fits in our vision. We are gonna give you and continue focusing and delivering this visibility of everything you have and then giving you many different ways to control that access and limit the risk that those devices could create in your network, either proactively or reactively. Now, a bit more about Forescout. Forescout has been, has been around for over 10 years, has been on this mission uh, and very focused on this mission for all that time. We have 1,200 people, over 400 engineers, very dedicated to this mission. We have 3,500 customers across the globe. We focus typically on the large enterprises. Global 2000 large governments are a large portion of our business and the way we think about the market. It's the complex organizations, sophisticated organizations, global in nature that might have sites that are the most modern sites that you've seen and deployed today to technologies that they have in their environments that have been there for 30, 40 years. Um, it's also, we think about scale. When you think about these environments, you need to be able to work in environments that you might find, and we have customers running 2 million devices in a single environment. That requires a level of scale to be able to see devices across all these environments. These numbers, as we said, are tripling. So scale is super critical. And we have over 70 million devices under management. We actually have customers have shared uh, information about the devices that they find, and I'll talk more about uh, this, the device cloud. We have over 11 million of these devices in our cloud, where it allows us to really understand what's going on with those devices, learn about new devices as they uh, landed in an organization. And we believe this is the biggest pool of IoT and IT uh, devices, uh, crowdsourced devices in the world. Now, at underlying all of this, we started with our platform, and it's about visibility. So I will spend a few minutes talking about why visibility for us is important and why do we do it uh, well. And then I'll show you how that can get used on the, the, the broad set of our products, and then I'll make the, 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 the sh allow Tom to come and talk about segmentation. So eyesight. EyeSight is, our, is the visibility capability of our product. It's fundamentally our platform. We believe that in order to do any type of control or segmentation, you need to start with understanding what you have. And what we do with EyeSight starts with first discover all devices in your network. This seems simple, but it's not. I think most organizations today would admit that they don't know what they have in their networks. And uh, the question is, by how much? We typically discover 30, 40% more devices, even the most sophisticated organizations that have the highest controls, we find all types of devices. And this is not just IoT devices. This is whole sets of networks that people thought they were decommissioned and they're still being used by other users. Access controls, Windows machines that are not being managed uh, that they thought they were managed. 
And why do we do this well? Two reasons. One, we're agentless. And the second, we're multivariate. First word is probably easier to understand. So agentless, because most of these devices are today, you can put a software, or if that software breaks or stops working, you lose the ability to manage or secure that device, becomes critical. Now, multivariate is a more complex word. Um, what, what we say is you can't depend on a single method in order to be agentless. There's a lot of solutions today in the marketplace. It's just basically our span traffic. They look at the traffic, do some deep packet inspection, and they tell you what they have. That in itself, very strong technique, one of 20 that we have. What that allows you to do, or the challenge of that solution is that if the traffic is encrypted or simply you don't have access to that traffic, you no longer know anything about those devices or that they even exist. So we have developed over time 20 different techniques to collect data from the network and all the infrastructure that the organizations have at all levels that actually allows us to both discover devices but also understand variables from all these different methods to give you the full picture of your environment. This is unique, and what this gives us is the ability to tell you 100% visibility to the devices you have in your network. Not just great visibility to devices you can discover, but to all devices in your network. The second step is actually understanding what they are. This is called, we call it classifica classification. Is this a Windows machine, or is this an MRI machine that's built on a Windows server? Those things are important to know for many different reasons. <coughs> one of them, one of our customers, wants to scan all Windows machines with a uh, vulnerability assessment, wants to not touch the MRI machine, which could disrupt <coughs> uh, 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 its operations. So we've built a device cloud. We have 11 million devices from our customers that have been willing to share that information. What that allows us is to learn about those devices as new devices come to the, uh, to the market and connect to their network. We're able to discover devices haven't been classified. We have researchers that look at it. We're building machine learning to understand it better and creating fingerprints to be able to classify to a level granularity what that device is. Not just what it is, with its function, its operating system, its vendor. And this is really important for classification. And you will be critical and a foundation element to start the segmentation initiative. And then finally, the final step is really to assess the posture of this device. And this what does this mean? Very different if it's a Windows machine that's issued by an IT department. That could be you want to make sure it's running antivirus, it's encrypted, it has all the, the security tools and that you have invested millions of dollars that's actually working and effective. On the other hand, if it's an IoT device, you might not have that ability to do that, but you want to ensure that you're not running default passwords. They're communicating on the protocols that they expect you to, to communicate. That's what we call the, the, the ability to assess the posture. Do we know about any vulnerabilities about those devices? And then you can add business context to it. It's not just a device. Um, example of, of, of our, one of our customers, they have security cameras. If that security camera is on the outside of the building, call it a, a, um, a substation in a, in a utility, that's a different posture and security that they want to understand about that device versus if it's within already a gated area of the building. And so understanding not just the, the location, the business posture of the device, the business context becomes elements that we can add around each of these devices. So our <coughs> visibility is not just knowing what device you have in your network. It's deep understanding of each of these devices so that you can then start putting policies in place about what that device should and should not be able to do in your network. Can I ask a quick question? Two things. How do you get your data from? So if you're going to do this mm -hmm. classification and mm -hmm. identification <gasps> and inventory building, mm -hmm. what's your data source? We Many data sources. So the first one is the, the data we collect from the network. We have 20 different methods. Right. Some of them, half of them are active. Some of them are, are passive in terms of how we gather the information. Spend port, net flows, all that information to gather into the a set of capture, attributes. Flow data, the usual criminals. Yeah, yeah. The WMI into a, a, a device, right. and maps, all those techniques. What's unique about what we do is how we assemble together to actually understand okay. the attributes. So you're, then, you're doing active testing, scans, 
I think depending on the network available data if, sources are WMI yes in the case of Linux you bat you shell in I imagine yes script rip some stuff out of the servers perfect right exactly okay so the second part then is how do you enforce you're talking here about eyesight and you're coming in maybe this is later in the presentation so tell me to shut up by yeah. all means um, <laughs> you're just setting up a good question for the next slide yeah so the enforcement <laughs> so because you've, you've told me that you're classif auto classifying based on you know, data available from common sources or well-known yes. sources, yeah. effectively. So it's not a, you're not doing miracles, right? So on the classification, we are both um, leveraging sources that exist. You yeah. know, um, SNMP, Netflow, Xflow, yes. whatever. And databases that exist in the marketplace, and we create our own database as we're learning from from the, the 11 million devices, and we're learning, right. and we're increasingly applying. Um, uh, machine learning techniques that we might, that starts getting to, if you don't have full information about a device, that you can statistically understand this is what you think is the device is and start to get to that. Okay. So this is all around the visibility. Yep. You were talking about the next steps is what do we do with the visibility as a next step? Well, how do you enforce? Because once you have visibility, you need to yes. bring the hammer down. Yes. I think I had one more question. Yeah, this is probably a, you yeah. probably said this, but is, um, is this a SaaS product? Uh, no, today, uh, so this is a, a, uh, a appliance, a virtual or physical appliance. Um, we deploy the sensors on the network, uh, but uh, depending, can be centralized or decentralized. Uh, the intelligence then it's put into our, on, on typically deployed in a data center centrally to, to collect that. Our device cloud is, a, of course, a cloud based on the name, because this is how we crowdsource all the information. And basically, we're building more and more of our intelligence as we see our roadmap. It's really building a lot more of that intelligence, releasing it for the on-prem uh, sensors or sites to be able to distill that information on the cloud. Okay, thank you. So you told that you have... And just to be clear, that's on the iSite. iSegment is a cloud product, software as a service. Yes, sorry. So you told that you have this database with uh, 11 million devices yes. already classified. Yes. Isn't it a risk? I mean, uh, so you are providing this as a service to your customer, but yeah. if somebody has access to this information, they, you know, mm -hmm. can also know the vulnerabilities of these devices and everything that comes with it. So two two things. Um, one is uh, we're a secure environment. More importantly, as the information that they're sharing, we're anonymizing and providing the, the information that's being shared into our device cloud to only for those who allow us to do classification. So you brought in one of the aspects, uh, concerns would be, if I know who that customer is and I see their device in my cloud and I know it's vulnerable, I could target it as a part of, of an attack. We have multiple steps to anonymize the customer anonymize information that be about that customer to avoid any of that. In addition to investing heavily in making sure that our own uh, database is fully secured and not, not breachable. But even that, we're creating that, that, uh, uh, those limitations. There's always <clears throat> special snowflakes environments, right? So yes. even with the great classification database and all yeah. of the insight that you're providing, what's like the false positive or misread rate typically when you, when you see this deployed? Um, so we track that. Um, it's, so two things. One is um, the customer itself, as they're deploying, have the ability to override the classification, creating their own fingerprints locally. Because as you said, this is a, uh, because we work in sophisticated organizations, they have broad set of, 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 of devices. One example, we're working with a manufacturer that they have products in the marketplace which we classify, but they're working on version six, version seven of that product, and they don't want us to classify or have those fingerprints available. They're created their own. So that's the first ability. We track what customers are then, um, if they change one of the <coughs> classification, and that rate is below 0.5% uh, of the devices. Uh, it's, I think there's another zero before the five. So it's pretty low, the, the, the numbers. Uh, so we try to track it, make it easier for the customer to continue to validate, because the more information they give us back, the better we'll provide to everyone else. Uh, but we track that very closely. 0 0.05? 0.05% um, that the customers have gone in and reclassified into something else, and we get that information. Interesting. Yeah. Now, we believe that uh, 
when we deploy the, the product, depending on the environment and how unique the environment is, we find that we might get to 95%, 98% uh, classification from our fingerprints, and they still need to do then the, the work on the rest of it. So w the, 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 the metric I'm tracking is the ones that we provided and we classified automatically, how many did they decided right. to... It's a, there's a difference between false positive versus unknown. Yes, this, I was answering the false positive. Right. There's the, then 2 to 5%, depending on the environment, it would be unknown, that they then can create their fingerprints, we have mechanisms to learn about the fingerprints they create that feeds back into our environment. Okay, thanks. Okay. What is the process of reclassifying? It, within the product? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, they can create their own fingerprints and they can use methods that you would be, all the attributes that any device that they have, they can use any type of attributes, even attributes that they create themselves. We can ingest attributes from, um, let's say that they use a, a database to track very specific uh, medical attributes, we can ingest from those databases information and use that for classification. So it's a very, it's a policy engine that you create your set of rules, if the analysis, based in any attribute that we can collect based on the 20 techniques, anything we can ingest. Okay. So eyesight, visibility, it's a foundation to everything we do. So what is everything then that we do? From that visibility, we've now allow you to build on top of it with a set of products that we have. We have segmentation, which will be the focus of the rest of the day. We have control, eye control. This is ability, it's a proactive ability to say, this device is, I learned what this device is, I can now determine the access that they have in my network. Think of it as more of a reactive type of posture. If this device is non-compliant, move it to a remediation VLAN. If this device is a medical device, move to a VLAN. Uh, if I see this device mis misbehaving, take it out and block it from the network. Uh, so those would be the type of activities you would have with eye control. Eye segment will give you a set of proactive, more proactive activities. You don't have to, if I know what this device is, this is what I'm gonna allow it to do in my network. It doesn't have to do anything bad, typically, Access control is intended to prevent things bad from happening. Segmentation is very much focused on a proactive. Limit the zone of what this device can do. If it's especially in an IoT or in an application that you can be predictive about what they're supposed to do, creating network segments around them will then re reduce your risk posture for those. And now I, I extend is a product that really extends the capabilities by integrating with third-party products and automating the processes. Reality, when you have this much visibility, one, you want to enrich it with capabilities from other products, but you also want to be able to automate actions with other products that would benefit from this visibility. We currently have in excess of 20 of these. Uh, these are integration with different technologies. I would love to spend more time on it, but I don't want to take the, 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 the focus away from segmentation. But this is what allows you to really automate at line speed actions that you want to take uh, with other, other products. And it will also be leveraged by iSegment in order to take uh, actions and be able to enforcement actions with firewalls and other technologies. So.